So the next speaker is going to join us virtually. I hope. <laughs> So Afra is an intern who's been working here with uh, Professor Brian Chapman, uh, and due to a uh, scheduling conflict, couldn't join us today, but took the time to put together what I think is a really nice presentation of the work that she's done with Brian this summer. Hello, my name is Afra Shafkat, and I will be presenting my project, which is the automated ventricle segmentation using a regression neural network initialization-based active shape model. I am an undergraduate from MIT in the Department of Biological Engineering, class of 2013, and my mentor for this project was Brian Chapman. In this presentation, we will discuss the motivation behind building the automated segmentation tool for ventricles the series of steps that were undertaken to build it, and then most importantly, its application in obtaining data for Kawasaki's disease, which is an autoimmune disorder with a serious effect on the heart, targeting mostly children under five years of age. By having an active shape model of the heart, it will allow us to quantify cardiac function. Manual segmentation is arduous. For example, Alison Marston, a collaborator in Kawasaki disease research at UCSD, cites manual segmentation as the primary limiter in computational fluid dynamic modeling of the disease. This model will facilitate both image retrieval and analysis. A completely automated process will allow highly efficient extraction of the ventricles, as well as allow automated quantitative analysis of heart wall motion, as shown in the following clip. To build the model, step one was to obtain manual segmentations from MDCTs. Our data set comprised of 20 MDCTs from adult patients, which were all segmented for ventricles using the segmentation tool ITK-SNAP. The figure on the left shows the result of the segmentation of the ventricles in 3D, while the figure on the right shows how the segmentation was performed on the axial axes of each image. Once the manual segmentations were obtained, a median right ventricle and left ventricle were identified and used as a reference, and all the other ventricles were then compared and registered based on that reference. This resulted in transformation vector matrices, which represented the transformations along the X, Y, and Z axes for all the pixels in each of the ventricles. The first row represents the transformation vectors for a right ventricle case along the X, Y, the YZ and the XZ axes from left to right, while the second row represents the same for a case of left ventricle. After obtaining the transformation matrices, a mesh of vertices were obtained for the reference ventricles and then transformed according to the transformation vector data. This resulted in a mesh of vertices for all the ventricles. Row 1 shows the reference ventricles, the right ventricle in red and the left ventricle in green, while row 2 shows an example of the transformed ventricles. Once we had obtained the transformed data, we used it to train the active shape model. Along with the mesh of vertices, we provided the shape model with the CT images, which had the intensity information along the contours defined by the segmentation. Using the intensity information from the CTs and the segmentations provided, the active shape model was trained. The figures represent the training active shape model for the right ventricle, shown in red, and the left ventricle in green. To allow complete automatic extraction, information is needed for the approximate location of the ventricles. This was done by extraction of the centroids of left lung lobe using existing techniques by Hoffman and the centroids of the ventricles from the data set. The generalized regression neural network was then trained on these polar coordinates between the origin and the centroids of the ventricles and the left lung lobe. Polar coordinates for the ventricles were then automatically calculated for the new CTs. To test the active shape model, we submitted a raw CT image to the shape model and it automatically generated the ventricle segmentations as shown in the figures. The figures on the left show the right ventricle and the left ventricle segmented 
while the figures on the right show the process of identifying the ventricles. The active shape model estimates a bunch of data points according to the mean shape of the ventricles from the data set it was trained on, represented by the red spots on the image. And then by calculating the intensity gradients on the slices, it then computes the actual ventricle shown in green. Automation is necessary for processing large image collections, and by building the active shape model, it will provide efficient extraction of ventricles from the CT images, which could provide seeding for vascular segmentations and can also be used in quantifying cardiac function in patients affected by Kawasaki's disease. It would also result in faster accumulation of data and data analysis. One of the limitations of the project is that it currently is not scale invariant. That is for groups where the heart size would vary considerably, we would need to train the shape model on different data sets. The method is currently modality dependent as well due to the intensity differences in MRI and CT images, for example, and thus the shape models would need to be trained on different data sets. As the segmentations are done manually, there is a slice-to-slice -slice variability in the manual segmentations. Future directions for our project, we are currently in the process of manually segmenting pediatric CT scans affected by Kawasaki's disease, which would lead us to building a shape model to automatically detect ventricles from future CTs. Things I learned. Through this project, I learned a lot about the anatomy and physiology of the heart from a radiological perspective. It allowed me to master segmentation tools like ITK SNAP and also to learn how to build the active shape model and other image processing techniques and tools. Lastly, but most importantly, coming from freezing cold winters and humid summers of Boston, I realized San Diego truly is heaven. I would like to thank Brian Chapman, my mentor, for helping me throughout the project. Alizi Fan for his constant support and guidance throughout the project. Shazi Ashfaq, who was the main radiologist I consulted for the manual segmentations. Amal Kher Gentili, who was also a consult radiologist on the project. Cal IT2 for providing accommodations for the summer. IDASH and DBMI for providing me with the research opportunity. And the NIH for funding this research project. Thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at my email address. Thank you and have a nice day.